Thank you. All right, so um, with this setup, the first thing you wanna do is navigate to your Google Classroom. So the way to do that is to be in any, you know, once you're logged into your Google account, for instance, here's my um, inbox, um, you just wanna go over to your hub, essentially, right, your Google Apps. And mine is all the way at the bottom, so you do have to scroll down a little bit here. And so um, what you're gonna see is gonna look a little bit differently than yours, but um, because I actually have some classrooms created, okay? And once you have classrooms created, they'll look like this. So they'll have like a little tab for each one, okay? So right now, you'll just have this little plus that says join the class, and you won't be able to actually create one. But once you're entered into that group, you'll be able to. Um, and all you do is press plus. Um, and so here I would create a class. All right, so for this, for this purpose, we'll create a little class here. So I'm going to call this test class. So here's a couple of things to keep in mind when you are titling a class. You can always go back and edit that. So for quick purposes, you might just throw one in there. Um, but do keep in mind best practices are to really title it to something that's not going to get confusing. So math class one, right? You can imagine you're going to have a math class every semester for, for however long that could get cumbersome. So you might want to date it by a year or a semester. Um, and so forth, just so you can, for your purposes later on, keep it organized. Okay, so we'll, we'll call it that. We'll section it one. I'm not going to put anything else in there. I just want to show you the process of getting started. So what's going to happen now is my class will kind of be created in a minute once it's done thinking. Uh, so now you, you see it throws me right into this class. Okay. Um, and so by default, it gives me this little theme over here. I can change all of that. So once you are, um, you know, started your class by setting one up like this, uh, excuse me, creating a class, you want to check a couple of things. The first thing you want to do is go to your gear. And I know many of you have been in my trainings before, right? Three dots in gear is where you're going to find most of what you need. So go to your gear. And when you do that, you're going to be looking at the class settings for this specific class. Okay? Not Google Classroom as a whole application, but for this specific test class. Here are my details. Okay. In true Google fashion, it's pretty simplistic. So that I appreciate. So again, here, if I wanted to change my name of the class, I can do that. I can add in a subject, a room. Uh, maybe you don't have a room to start. You want to add it in later. You can do that. But down below is where we get into some more uh, details that are, are important. Um, so invite codes. Right now, this class is just me. I have no one invited to it. So in order to get students in it or participants in it, I need to invite them. So I can either turn on so that I have a code to um, enter for them to enter to actually join. So if you saw in the beginning where it said join or create a class, if you had a code, you could actually join the class. Uh, but I also have an invite link. So I could press this copy invite link and actually put that into an email. So if I have an email with all my students' addresses, I could email them the link that way. Um, and I can also display the class code right on my header when we first started. And this is my class code right here. So it depends on how you want to invite students. I typically invite them by using this link. It's easy enough. But if you notice after um, you know a couple days, people are not actually accepting the invitation because that comes from Google, right? So it gets lost in their email. You could send a separate email and just give them this class code, right? Don't forget, here's our classroom and here is our class code. So completely up to you. And then again, you can decide whether you want to display it um, on your header or not, okay? Uh, right, so the Next thing is your stream. So your stream is that very beginning part when you logged in, when we logged in. Think of it as your, um, like a Facebook feed or a social media feed, okay? It's where all the correspondence lives. Uh, so you can decide how you want that to be set up. Do you want it so that your students or participants can post and comment on that stream, on that feed? Uh, do you want it so that students can only comment and not actually post or just leave it so that only you and any other teachers can post? 
you know, best practices depends on the audience you're dealing with, right? If you're dealing with uh, younger students, then um, some say keep it on, let them make a mistake and then use it to correct and help them to learn better on, you know, better practices with real life situations like social media. Um, we're likely dealing with a, a older crowd, so you can decide what works. And again, these can be changed. So after a few weeks, if you feel like it, you know, you need to change it, you can do that. Uh, so those are your settings there. And then you can also generate a meet link, meet link right from your classroom. So many of us likely use our calendar uh, to create a meet link, right? A, a reoccurring link for our class. You can continue to do that. Um, previously, there have been some glitches with this, um, but if you'd like to, you can actually generate a meet link. And what happens when I do that, now I have my own link that is associated to this classroom and will be visible to all of those uh, students that are invited to this class. And then you see this toggle button, I can make it visible to students. Again, deal, depending on your audience, you can choose to just leave that open or on, excuse me, but if you wanted to shut it off at the end of class, turn it back on until so no one's getting in and out when you don't want them to, um, that's also an option. So that's kind of nice. You don't have to go make another invite if you didn't want to. Okay. And then the last setting down below is this grading. And um, you can either use overall grading calculations if you want. You don't have to. Um, you can also choose to show overall grades to students. That's just a toggle button. If you choose um, total points or weighted, then it will let you turn this on or off. If you don't choose that, that's okay, but you can still add grab, grade categories. So if you wanted to do something like um, discussion boards, warm-ups, and so forth, it will create grade um, areas or categories. So that's a nice option. So you can continue to add those and, and make them default points as well. So I wanted you to be aware that first and foremost, to check out your settings for this class so you have it set up the way that you're comfortable and then feel feel free to change it as necessary any questions on any of those settings before we continue on okay awesome so pretty self-explanatory right so here's the header that i was talking about i can um this is what everyone else will see as well okay so any of my students you can change your theme um, not at, you know, I'm sure this is an incredibly important. I, I think it is because I like, you know, the look and feel, but, uh, you can change your theme. So if you, you know, it, Google said, oh, you're having a test class. So this looks good. You can use any number of these, um, templates, but you could also use other, um, programs like Canva to create your own customized, um, header and, and put that in there. So, um, I'll show you, for example, some of my classroom so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, for instance, I have this pretend class called the best class ever. And in the back here, can you see the technology training um, header? So I created that very simplistically using Canva. And then what I did is I uploaded a photo. Okay, so I created it and then I uploaded it. So up to you, whatever you want to use, if it's not important to you, you can certainly use um, a theme. There's lots of great ones to choose from or create your own. And then, um, so here's where I was talking the stream. So this shows you everything I've posted, whether it was an assignment, or for instance, down here is a question. Uh, we'll get into what that means in a second. Or here's just a, a little, um, you know, what do you think about Google Classroom? Check out today's assignment, or it's just an announcement. Uh, so all that will be here for, you know, both myself and students to see. Okay, so that's your header. You can see here I've got this meet link, but um, I actually have it so it's not visible right now. Okay, and there's my class code. And then up above here, I've got my stream, as you know, and then I've got other tabs, classwork, people, and grades. Okay, so classwork is where you are going to create um, any of your classwork. Okay, so that could be a variety of options. It could be, an assignment, right? Traditional assignment, something that you may or may not want graded. Um, it could be, you know, something that you attach. We'll look at that in a second. Ignore this, how do you? That's something specific to me. Um, you have a quiz, you can do quizzes. 
you can ask a question. So if you're looking to do almost like an exit uh, ticket or ask questions, some sort of discussion conversation, you can choose that. Material, that's if you just want to post documentation, you want flyers, um, you know, readings, what have you, it's not going to be graded. And then a great option is reusing a post. When you select reuse a post, not only can you reuse a post from this class, but any of your Google Classrooms. So you can imagine if you set this up, um, let's say math class in the spring semester, right? It's all here. Come my fall semester, I can reuse that post and just maybe change the, the deadline or the uh, whatever information I want, but I don't have to reinvent the whole wheel. Um, so you have that there. And then the last option is topic. What a topic is, is these. You see mine, homework, daily assignments, warm-ups. Those are topics. There are ways that I chose to organize my material. You can choose to do that. If you don't put it in topics, it will just all show here. It could obviously get a little bit um, confusing. In, in past experiences, using this as a teacher, I have also created a topic that says past assignments. And that just makes things a little easier so that if you need to refer to it later on, it's there but it's not in the limelight and it's down below for, you know, I don't know about you, but I want to be organized and I'm sure students want to be able to see what's important. Um, again, this is just a test class. You could get more granular, um, but here's some, you know, here's some different class documents or um, I had a section for warmups and so forth. So let me show you what a, um, a, a regular assignment looks like versus some of the others. Okay. Um, so again, I'm in classwork and all you would do is go to this plus create at the top and you press assignment. So here you're going to put in your title, uh, whatever it's called. Again, you might want to put these in date format or some format so you can refer to them later on um, in instructions. If your instructions are not going to be in the assignment itself, so Let's say you have a Google Doc you're um, going to attach here that has your instructions, then you can just say refer to the Google Doc. Um, but if you need to put instructions, you should do that here. And then you have the option of adding. So you can add um, a YouTube video. So it could be as something as simple as, you know, watch this YouTube video and then answer these questions. Uh, you could add a link. So it can be a link to a website, uh, a wherever, uh, a file. So if you already have an assignment created, a Google Doc, a sheet, a Word document, whatever, you can actually attach it here. Or you can create it right from here as well. So you want to create um, maybe a Google slide assignment. You can do that right from this box as well, or any one of these. That's just an example. Okay, does that make sense so far? Good, okay, thanks. Uh, so over here to the right is where you get into the nitty gritty of this assignment. Um, so. I know that this is for this particular, the best class, but hypothetically, maybe I want to add the same assignment for four of my classes. I could actually select all of them. So again, re, you know, you're using it, you're posting it in several places simultaneously. Another item to keep in mind is differentiating. Um, so in by default, it's going to select that I'm going to assign this to all of my students in this class but I can actually choose to maybe not send it to Allison's student, right? Again, lots of reasons for that, especially we might be using this for um, business purposes. You might be using this for staff purposes. You know, maybe somebody's onboarding and you want to just give this uh, material to that person, right? You don't need to re keep sending it to the rest of the group. You can do it that way. Uh, and so forth. So by default, it's all students, but you can certainly choose to select or not select who, who gets this assignment. Uh, so I'll leave it at all students. And then if you had a grade category, so for instance, this is my test. Um, I've got warm ups, group work, just again to make things a little more manageable, I could choose to put this in warm ups. And then because I set this up previously, I know that warm ups are an automatic four points. Uh, I can choose a due date, you can choose a due date, and you can choose a time, okay, all the way up till 1.59 p.m. And then if you had a topic already created, you could choose one of them here, okay, so I can choose warm-ups, or I could also 
create a topic or maybe I don't have a topic and I just want it to hang out completely up to you and then also something that is useful for many of us is the idea of um, I think I made it mad here um, is the idea of using a rubric uh, sorry trying to make this work here um, you can use a rubric or uh, you can actually create a rubric um, as well. So I have to actually title this first. And I need to actually add something. So <laughs> I'm just going to create a doc. Um, and we're going to pretend this is our assignment. Bear with me here. All right. So, uh, sorry guys. I don't mean to lose you. So I'm going back into classwork there. There it is. Okay, so now that I actually have, have an assignment there, even if it's pretend, you'll see that this plus rubric has appeared. That's what I wanted you to be able to see. Um, rubrics, you can create a rubric right from this assignment, right? Um, I'll just show you that real quick. We won't get into it too much, but play with it, see if it works for you. It's, again, pretty simple. It tells you right here, what do you want your cr criteria to be, you know, what's your title, what's your description, how many points, and then you can add criteria so you can continue to add to that if you chose, okay? That's if you were to um, create a rubric from here, but I can also reuse. So if I had a rubric already created for this class or from another class, for instance, I think I have one, maybe I don't, I, I did have one. Um, <laughs> but if I had one for in one of my other classes, again, I don't have to recreate it, I can just reuse it. So if I had one in this in this class, it would pull up here and I could preview it or select it. Um, so you can create, reuse a rubric that you have in one of your Google Classrooms, or you can import one from Google Sheets. So if you have one created, add it into Google Sheets and then upload it right into your um, Google Classroom. And as you see, once it's uploaded, you can keep reusing it. Uh, so that's a nice option built in right there. And then lastly, but also incredibly important, I think especially to our audience, is checking plagiarism. If anybody is using Google Assignments in Blackboard, um, this is the same thing as originality reports. Um, think of it similar to uh, what we have as Turnitin in Blackboard. And so originality reports, for our particular Google license, we are allowed unlimited originality reports, or I should say, we can put originality reports on unlimited amounts of assignments. What I mean by that is, for some Google licenses, you are limited to having three assignments with originality reports, but in our case, um, hypothetically, if I was in maybe a writing course and I had 10 assignments, every single assignment, I wanted to turn on originality reports, I could. So that is a benefit, benefit to all of us, we have that, we're not limited to the amount of assignments we can use this function. And what happens there when I turn on plagiarism or check plagiarism is it creates originality reports. And I'm just gonna show you a brief look at what that looks like here on my slides. It's a little easier to see. Um, and essentially, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that okay. It, what it does is it runs a report. So this student gets to run run it, you as the faculty or whomever, you don't see what they are seeing, right? They get to run it and see, okay, do I have anything that's being flagged as um, being plagiarized, okay? They get to run it. Then hopefully they fix anything that gets flagged, right? Then they get to run it again. So they actually get three runs at it, okay? So that's pretty awesome. So then they run it the second time and it's like, okay, now you should really have it <laughs> taken care of, but if they don't, they get three runs at it. So they get to run it, check and see what they get. You can see over here on the right, uh, they get, you can see a percentage account and it will actually match um, to the web, like where exactly they, you know, Google found it um, and so forth. And then once the student or person is ready to submit it, they're done running, they can turn it in. And then what happens is, you, um, the recipient, right, when you go to open it, you'll actually be able to see a summary similar to this. You'll be able to see, you know, how much was flagged content. Is it 1%? In this case, it was 89%. 
um, you'll be able to see where that comes from. Um, and then you'll be able to grade it, uh, you know, or speak to the student as necessary. So I think it's a really great option to consider. Uh, it's built all in here and you just need to turn it on when you create that particular assignment. I'm gonna stop there for a second and breathe and let you ask me questions. Any thoughts on any of that? Does that seem clear enough? I will take the silence as a yes. All right, awesome. So that is your originality report piece. So we're gonna be back here in our classwork. So once that's all set, um, you know, I've decided whatever I want from my assignment, I can go up here to the top right. So you can see it says saved, okay? But I haven't actually assigned this yet. I can either press assign, or I can go to the little down arrow next to the assign, and I can choose to schedule this, right? So again, maybe it's um, you're working in the middle of the night or you're working three weeks in advance or over the summer. You just wanna get this ready to go, but you don't want it to start popping up in students' um, inboxes quite yet. You can schedule this. You can also just save it as a draft, pick it up the next day, finish it, um, or get rid of it all together and discard it. So do know you have those options to the right other than just pressing assign. Okay, so I'm gonna get out of this one just to show you a different view here. Um, so that is your classwork tab and that is creating an assignment. Again, similar idea with quiz assignment. Again, question is more of looking to gauge information, interest, so forth. Little difference with that is that you have these two options here, whether students can reply to each other or whether students can edit their answer. So if you have it selected that students can reply to each other, then obviously they'll be able to see each other's responses, okay? So you need to determine if this is something you want public, um, open for them to just, you know, if it's, what did you think about the book, then that's fine. If it's a little more personal or something, for instance, I, I did this pretend one, what is your biggest challenge in this class? You know, is there anything I can help you with? So it was a personal question, um, a personalized question here, that I wanted students to respond to, my fake students. Um, and so what I can do is I can, you know, if I wanna show you how I set that up, I go to my three dots and I press edit and I can see how I set that up. So you can see over here to the right, I made it so not only could they not reply to each other, I also made it so they couldn't edit their answer. And uh, so that's what the question does as well. And then I can see while we're here, you know, who's turned it in, like how many people have turned it in, how many were assigned. Um, I can, you know, I can view my question. So if I go to turned in, this actually brings me kind of like to the grading portion. Um, but here I can see, you know, Allison's student said that her biggest challenge, she wasn't sure. And I can see that info technology said that waking up on time was their biggest challenge. So, um, you know, those are some answers here. And I actually can look at those and and go from there but so that was a different that was just going in through that way um i don't want to confuse you too too much there so that's that's your classwork you can choose and then the material again is using that idea of just um, documents and so forth next we've got people it's exactly what it says it shows you who the teachers are it shows you who i've invited or who is in this classroom as students you can invite more than one teacher, right? Whatever that may be, um, leaders, what have you. And then you've got grades. So here's essentially my grade book. Okay, so you can see a few, again, this is all tests, so it's not actually real. <laughs> um, but I've got a few different assignments here. Some have due dates, some don't. Um, you can see some have been graded. When they look like this and they have a green color, but it's like an opening, it means that the student has actually submitted work, but I've yet to answer it, right? I've yet to, um, excuse me, grade it. So I can just actually select it and grade right on it. I can go right up here to the topic so that I can see, you know, again, who's turned it in, right? What, what I wanna write. In this case, it was just a question. So I don't have a lot to read. And then I can go over here and, and give them, you know, whatever it is, whatever their score is. And when I did that, you can see at the top left, I have this return button, and that's gonna let me know, okay, you're letting your student know that you're giving them a four out of four. Did you wanna also give any private comment? 
So I could say, you know, way to go. I agree with you. And again, starts that kind of rapport and conversation with the student just between you and them. Uh, so that is, bear with me, I just want to get out of that section there. And go back to, so that was our grading. Um, you can see what is, you know, what needs to be graded if it's green. And then if it's red, it'll say missing. So as a practical matter, if information technology wanted to um, today go ahead and submit their multiplication division assignment, they could, um, but it will show, show to me as the instructor that it is late. So um, it doesn't necessarily turn off, right? The assignment isn't gone. It's still there, um, but I have to determine whether I want to give them less points or, or accept it at all. Um, but they do have the ability to submit um, at that point. So here it's showing you, you know, again, everything. It's pretty simple um, in your grading there. Let's see. What else do I want to tell you? A um, couple other things. Let's see. Any, any questions before I continue to move along? And in um, while I let you talk. Um, you do, in the slide deck, I did kind of make this more specific of what the assignments look like. Uh, so something to also think about is, or keep in mind, is on our instructor view, and I can show you what it looks like from a student. From our instructor view, we will see the uh, to review button, and students have a to do button. So what am I talking about there? So if I go over here to my best class ever, the little stack over here, my main menu, I can see all of my classes, okay? Even if I was a student student in any classes, I would actually have that uh, category there as well. Uh, so you can both be a teacher and also a student in separate classes, um, which brings me to a, a, a best practice thought, right? If you're like me, you wanna see what the other person is seeing, you wanna see what the student is seeing, that is tricky. There's not a student view like we have in Blackboard where you can, in, you know, um, impersonate a student basically and see what that looks like. So the workaround to that is use another account, you know, use if you have a department account or do you have a personal account that you don't mind entering in. And then that way you can go in as that account and just to see, you know, make that that account your student. Does that make sense? So I could use my personal account and add that as a student. And that way I can see both sides of it. I will say there's not really anything different on that side of, of the world, but if you feel more comfortable, that's one way to work around that. Uh, but so here's the to review option I was talking about. Um, I can see all my classes, I can see my calendar. So if I wanted to see when I have everything due for these classes, I can select that. And then to review. So this is just a quick snapshot of what work I have in progress. So here's a couple of my assignments, how many have turned it in, how many have been assigned, how many have been graded. I can, right, so I'm just on the go, I wanna check. Well, let's look at, you know, this classroom. This is a lot of different options here, but I can see more information. So you're to review, and then I can see what's been reviewed. If I had any work that I've marked as done, right, it's kind of like your to-do button, but it's called to review as an instructor. And students have the same thing, but it's called to do. And it lets them know, hey, you have this coming up. This is what you need to do. So with that in mind, you really want to make sure you put due dates because otherwise those will stay under to do forever. And then it gets a little cumbersome and students don't know when what's due. Uh, so, so just keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, so that's your to, to review button. Um, you also have another gear down here. I know I mentioned the gear over to the right while you were in a class. This is your general settings for the entire application of Google Classroom. And if I go here, this is where um, you might want to just double check. A lot of this is by default, okay? Um, meaning it's already done for you. So if for some reason you didn't want to receive email notifications, you'd need to manually toggle that off, okay? I want to, so now you can see I've got a lot of other options. And, um, you know, comments on my post, like what do I want to get emails about? Um, what don't I want to receive emails for? Things like that. Class notifications, okay? So down here, 
you'll see this last class I set up, but it's actually not managed by me. It's managed by another department. So I don't actually need to receive any notifications for that class, um, but that will likely not be the case for many of you. So um, you can choose to toggle these on or off, okay? Um, one nice thing to keep in mind for Google Classroom, because it's a repository for so many um, options, you can e even create these without students in them. So um, some teachers um, actually create them and team teach, work together, add in their assignments, add in their material, do all of the footwork. And then literally when they're ready to create their classroom with students in it, all they need to do is pull it over. So they reuse a post, they reuse the material, but it's all in a repository in one classroom. Uh, so that's another way to think about using it um, as well. So, uh, great. So those are your general classroom settings to keep them. Again, if you don't look at them, those are the default. But if you want, we're looking for anything else more specific, those are there. Right. So let's go back here. Make sure I. Uh, so that's a little bit more about the review button. We talked about the plagiarism. So. Few of the tips and tricks that we already started to discuss a little bit here is the idea of um, reusing assignments. Again, don't recreate. This is my first. Yeah, recreate the um, all that work. Reuse uh, a post and do it for all of your classes. So if you want to reuse a post from a class from last year, you can do that. Um, and again, numbering assignments helps you to keep track of what assignments you have, and then also the same with topics. If you don't use topics, it's not a very organized uh, situation. There isn't a lot more you can do to um, customize Google Classroom, uh, but this is a nice way to do it if you employ those. So keep those in mind. Um, some others, so we talked a little bit about, um, and I should show you this some more, about commenting and uh, private comments in your class in your classwork. So when you're grading student work, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you're actually able to keep track of what you're, right? So let's say you have a five page document you got from a student and you, you're, you're thinking as you go, well, rather than having to remember all of it, you can actually right click on a part of the page and comment, even if it's a positive comment, or maybe it's a, you forgot details here. Because then you imagine when you look at those comments, at the end of the five pages, you can start to uh, think about, all right, each comment maybe deducts a couple of points or something along those lines. It helps you to better grade by the time you get into it, to the end of it. And then there is a comment bank, um, incredibly useful. You can reuse comments, you can add comments um, every time. Again, the same comments can be used for various Google Classrooms, not just the one you're in. Um, and then returning multiple submissions. So this is a good reminder for me. I want to show you some of what this looks like. Uh, so back to grading. Okay. So I am going to use, just trying to see if there's a good example here. That was a warm up. All right. So here I'm in multiplication and division facts. Uh, this was actually a slide that I had added as an assignment, um, but I can see that information technology is missing. They did not attach anything, but Allison's student did. So I'm gonna select on here. Um, so I wanted you to see what the look that I was just referring to is. So it's actually gonna pull up the assignment and what Allison's student did. In this case, again, this is a slide that I, um, got uh, an assignment somebody else created on um, teachers pay teachers and that I um, was able to obtain and reuse and it's pretty cool um, you just move the numbers for the answers but regardless of what this is it could be a Google Doc it could be a, uh, you know a sheets a form whatever it is you selected it will pull up like this and you'll have this screen so over to the right you see it shows me when it was turned in it tells me if there was any history. So if I if I saw, I can see when um, the teacher assigned it and then when the student turned it in. So that's kind of nice. Um, and then I can see um, right here to the left, 
um, it basically like opens it almost like in a Google Doc, right? So you, you have all these functions. And then I have the ability to grade, so I can just put in a grade here. <clears throat> Excuse me, or I can change the total points. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, I can add a private comment. So I can add a private comment here to the grading. <clears throat> I can also add a comment over here in the document. Remember when I said you select a part of the document and you right click, <clears throat> and then I would press a comment. So I can actually comment, again, if this was a larger document that might come in handy even more so, right? Because in this case, if I put it here or in private comments, it's really one and the same. Um, but let's say I wanted to put it right next to the eight, right? So they know specifically what I was dealing with. I could do that. <clears throat> um, so I could put a comment and write, you know, um, no, something nicer than that, but <laughs> that's all I can think of right now. And then I could comment. And so the student can see it when they reopen. Um, but I can also write private comments here, okay? Ready to go, what have you. And I can post that. <clears throat> then up here, so I'm in this grading um, section, but down below you see this little, it almost looks like a word, <clears throat> a word bubble. It's your comment bank. So I have three already here. <clears throat> I can add to this. So when you're starting, for instance, you might already have these somewhere, right? Some of you might have them on a Word document or somewhere else. You have to individually put them in, but if you have them copied somewhere, you can just paste them, um, you know, so I'm going to go with mine because everything else is too positive over there. So I'm going to say, I'm going to add that one. <clears throat> so you can add them either as you go or all at once, right? So if I have 10 that I want to copy and paste, I just press add to bank and now they're there. So every time I go into a student work and if I press comment bank, these are here. And I can copy. So this is a great start. I can copy this, see the little copy to clipboard. And then I can go back over here to grading and I could put it here. So rather than me writing way to go, I could have just copied and put that right in there. Okay. Does that seem clear? Okay, great. So let me make sure I'm awesome. Thank you. So then, um, so that is where you could do some commenting. So again, you're either in grading or you have comments there. Um, you do have the option up here, as you can see, you know, if you wanted to put in text or do some other things, you could. Um, but I want to bring you to the very top left. So right now we're grading Allison's student. You can see it's turned in. If I select the down arrow, if there were more students who had um, submitted, they would have other names, right? It would say, um, you know, Joey's student information technology, and it would look the same. And what I could do is I could actually just keep moving to the next student. Okay, so right now I'm going to give this just for, um, I'm going to give it 100 at Allison's student. And um, you can see it's telling me it's not returned. You graded it, but you need to return it. You need to actually give it back to the student so that the grade is entered into your grade book. So again, I can return it now or I have the down arrow. I can return this submission or return multiple. What that means is if I had additional people, I could say, all right, I'm done with Allison. I'm going to leave her at 100. And I press this little right arrow. It's not useful because there isn't anyone else. But if there was, I would move on to the next person. I could do the same thing. Keep going, keep going, right? And when I am all done, because it's just easier that way maybe, I can go to my down arrow and press return multiple submissions. And it return would return all of those students I graded at the same time. Depends on what's easier for you. So if you find it no harder to just press return every single time, and you might feel more comfortable, that's fine. If you'd rather just not have to go through that process and, and wait till the end and send them all out, you could do that too. So um, I'm sure with a, a, a larger group, this might come in very handy. Uh, so you do have that option to return this or multiple. And, that can, and you, you would just keep scrolling to the next one. Um, so that is what the rating process basically looks like in regards to that. So I'm going to return this. And again, it, it will always prompt you. Are you sure you want to return this? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. And then you now I'm back here. So now I can um, just move out of here. 
Give me a second. All right, come on. Okay. Um, so it kind of opens it as a whole new tab. So just need to move over. Um, so now you can see my right down here in the grade book. I've got the comment that I provided the student and the grade. Um, okay, I can go here. I can go to each individual person. So if I wanted to go to Allison and actually see just what her grades look like, wow, she's very good. Um, you know, you can see exactly here. And the nice thing that I always notice with my own children is when there's this little comment next to a student, next to an assignment, it traditionally means that the teacher responded or wrote something. It's always good to look there. So students do get used to that. Um, are there any questions on any of that? Okay. All right. With the last couple of minutes, I will just show you briefly the other side of it. Um, just if it goes quick enough for me. Let's see, sorry, I meant to have this open. So what I'm doing now is I'm in my student account. Okay. Um, no, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go to the best class ever. So the same class we were just in, but now I'm a student. So this is what your students will see. So in this case, you can see um, Allison's student can see that she's just, um, you know, that this is graded. I can, this is just my stream as the student. I can just see, you know, the different um, comments. I can see if my classmates wrote anything and so forth. Okay, you can see, all, and it's all dated. I go all the way back. So this is my stream. Over here to the left, it says upcoming. So this would let me know if I had any work upcoming. I could view all and just look. So it's kind of like my to-do. Uh, it is my to-do, as you can see here. Okay, same here. If I went back okay, here, that's my to-do list. Okay, uh, so let me go back here. So I could. That's kind of nice. So students will see that on the left if they've got an upcoming work. Uh, I can also go over here to classwork and see it, basically the same things, right? So now I can see. Um, I can view my work up here, so I can see what's been like sent back to me. So here is, you know, my reflection. Here's the comment from the teacher, right? I get to see everything that um, the teacher sees, essentially. Uh, so that is, that's just going to my work as a student. Um, but classwork, again, I can go into each individual area and check, you know, whether I submitted it. So if you see these are grayed out, that means that they've already been submitted. So I'm good. If it's still blue, it means I probably haven't opened it and have not actually submitted anything. So that's um, kind of, you know, um, important, right? They get used to seeing those colors and saying, okay, if it's grayed, it means I'm good. If it's still there, um, you know, you got to double check. Um, and then people, again, it'll just show who's the teacher and so forth um, as well. So that's the class view, I mean, excuse me, the student view. It's not very different. Um, obviously, as the instructor, just like in anything else, you're the host, you're the owner, so you see a little bit more. Um, you write, obviously, all of the students and what they're doing and, and so forth, and you have settings. This student doesn't have any settings of this classroom. They do, however, have settings just like you for the overall application itself. And you can see student settings are the same thing. By default, they'll receive email notifications. So unless they're going in there and touching it, um, they'll be alerted of information as well. That happens in that classroom. So that being said, that is everything. Um, no, that's almost everything I want to tell you. Um, one other thing that sometimes worries people is the idea of um, what if I accidentally delete my classroom, right? We always worry about the, the worst. So you can't accidentally delete a classroom. Um, you can archive, okay? I can archive a classroom, but I cannot, I can eventually delete it, but you actually have to archive it first. So there is that safe safety net. Um, so don't worry about that. So if I go over here and I said, you know, um, so I can go and, oops, sorry, I don't know why it has that right So I can try to delete it, but it wouldn't necessarily let me. I could certainly choose to archive it. I have to go back to the right settings, sorry. Uh, 
All right, so you can see here in archives classes, I put these in here just so you can see. So once these are in here, I can go to the three dots. Now I could delete it, right? But I have to archive it first. So it's, so what I mean is you're not gonna accidentally press those three, you know, I'd have to go over here. Actually, I have to go in here. I have to, um, you know, go in here and try to, to like delete this before I go anywhere else. And so in order to do, you know, that's going to get a little tricky. <laughs> so don't worry about accidentally deleting it. You won't. You can certainly archive it. Um, and that would just clean up your list. And as you saw, if it's archived, you can restore it as well. Okay. Um, so hopefully that helps um, any worries you might have as well. All right, now I'm really done. Are there any questions or anything I didn't touch on that you'd like me to review? Anyone wanna use this in a different way that maybe I can offer any suggestions? Okay, thank you for your comments, I appreciate it.